Uh, right, so I've um, undone the fasteners on the bottom of uh, this spoiler and I've loosened off the fasteners on the top. So they have to come off first. You can take that off. Next thing to come off is the uh, front cover. I've also, um, prior to starting filming, I've also removed the battery earth strap, uh, which is important. I took the battery earth strap off the, um, the gearbox end of the earth strap, which is easy to undo. Um, that's quite important because uh, it um, reduces any chance of short circuits whilst you're working in this area of the bike. So there's the front engine cover. Of course, the other thing I did prior to starting filming is take the, uh, the fuel tank and the um, seat off. I'm not sure whether that's absolutely necessary, but it certainly makes things a little bit more accessible. Um, so, the next thing to do is to um, remove the... Uh, the um, bean can here you can if you want uh, put the pistons at top dead center if that uh, if you think that might help um, when you're retiming the uh, cylinder I'm oh, sorry retiming the ignition points wire because I converted this to points ignition um, or the um, Hall effect trigger connection so there's the bean can right and the next thing is um, to disconnect the um, cables on the alternator Um, might help you to uh, take a photograph. Uh, I use photographs a lot when I'm unfamiliar, but I've had these these components apart many times before. So it might help you to take a photograph before you start removing cables, just to make sure you know where uh, components go when you put them back together. So having done that, we can uh, we can start removing the um, alternator stator, and that means um, removing three bolts that hold the stator in place. They're spread about 120 degrees apart from each other.
This particular alternator is a high output alternator that I've had on for many years and uh, so it's got a couple of earth straps on the top here um, one on each side, one at about uh, 11 o'clock and the other one at about 2 o'clock and then we've got a third bolt that I'm just undoing at about 7 o'clock and uh, Then we need to carefully pry back the alternator body, which you can use a screwdriver to do that, but be careful that you don't um, uh, touch the, um, the windings that form part of the stator, because you can damage them. What we want to do is separate the laminated iron um, the laminated iron core from uh, the alloy of the um, of where it mounts. Uh, of course, can't get it very easily at the moment. Let's try a pry bar. So yeah, just carefully, maybe a little bit stuck. So that can just be lifted off as one unit. The um, the alternator brushes will pop down. They're under spring pressure. So they're the alternator brushes. So that can be uh, stashed away carefully. That leaves the rotor exposed. So uh, the next thing to do there is to loosen the rotor centre bolt may need to put it in gear and hold the brake on well I'll give it a I'll just put it in first I'm putting it in first gear and uh, just holding the brake on here actually it'd probably be put it better if I put it in that high gear but anyway we've managed to undo it probably be better in fourth gear really so that um, just comes off take the bolt all the way out there are two threads there to undo it from you undo it uh, from the crankshaft and then unscrew it out of the um, out of the uh, alternator itself and then you need an extractor um, to actually remove the alternator, which I'm trying to find. There it is. So there's the extractor. You can buy or make that quite easily. It's just a 516, uh, sorry, not 516, 8 mil bolt, a long 8 mil bolt with. Uh, just take that out again. So it's just a long 8mm bolt with um, uh, some of the thread machined off the end. As I say, you can buy that from Motor Works or Motor Bins or BMW dealer. Uh, you just screw that in all the way and then tighten it up. Again, you need to put the uh, Put it in gear and hold the brake on and that will crack the taper hopefully. There we go, it's popped off. So there's the rotor off. You can take that extractor out. You won't need that again unless you need to. Uh, okay, so the uh, 
the battery decided to run out as I was undoing the um, uh, I've started to undo the fasteners for the um, the rectifier here so I've undone the two fasteners on on uh, uh, this side uh, and uh, now I've got to undo the two fasteners on the other side um, as I was as I was saying it's a non-standard um, rectifier um, because I have a high output alternator so that's all part of the kit so just undoing the lower left hand mounting Has, um, like the other side at the bottom it has an earth strap that um, links to the alternator body stator body so that's the other earth strap um, now we'll undo the top one need the UJ to access that the nut off, just retrieve the washer on your devil it's that off and then we can pull the um, diode board or rectifier forward there's a, uh, a a connection on the back of this that needs to be removed that goes on the D plus terminal that needs to be pulled off so there's the um, the rectifier uh, also got a cable tie for the um, points wire okay so there's the uh, the rectifier uh, so if um, you look at that you can see in the past where I've had overheating of the um, um, diode board and I've gone over that with some high because which caused the uh, the solder to melt and I've gone over that um, with uh, some harder solder uh, some higher melting point solder um, and uh, that uh, that cured that little problem so that's the uh, the rectifier. Uh, now we can start removing the um, timing chain cover now. Um, uh, so there are uh, several screws to be um, undone here. There's one on either side, one here and one on the other side 
a couple more there there's two on this side and uh, another two on this side and then there are four on the outside at the bottom uh, all to be undone so they've all got to come undone and then uh, we can get the cover off um, so we'll do that Make sure you catch the washers. There should be washers. Sometimes they get stuck on the um, um, aluminium cover. The other thing uh, is that um, the um, not all of these fasteners are bolts some of them are um, sleeve nuts um, that um, have a um, uh, allen screw fitting this one i'm undoing at the moment is one such so there is um, the sleeve one of the sleeve nuts that'll have a wash behind it I'll uh, retrieve that in a minute. There's two on this side as I recall. They're um, uh, slightly larger. The um, the screws are five mil Allen key, and the and the sleeve nuts are six mil Allen key. There's three of those in all, uh, and then there should be behind that a washer, but I can't get those off at the moment. But we'll retrieve those as we pull the cover off. And then at the bottom, we've got four more Allen screws. That, uh, make sure that you've got a good fit with the Allen screw on the external ones because they can get full of crap. These are probably more likely to have the washers stick in the hole because they're being exposed to um, the atmosphere and the weather. Oh no, that one's come out. The steel can bond to the aluminium. That one's come out all right.
this um, the grommet here passes um, uh, cables from the inside of the uh, um, uh, alternator cover to the outside of the main wiring loom so that's got to be withdrawn but one of those cables actually goes through and connects onto the back of the starter motor you can just see it on my finger there so I've got to disconnect that and to do that I've got to remove this cover here um, so that's got to come off next so to remove this cover I've got to undo this screw here and one screw on the other side I'll probably also have to uh, take the top off the air filter you certainly will need to if you've still got your trumpets on uh, on, on your air filter um, so we'll do that Uh, and uh, oh, the washer's rusted too on that one, so I've got to put a new washer on there. That came off in two parts. Uh, so, here we are. This cable. This cable here which uh, goes on a spade on the back of the, um, you can see the spade there on the back of the starter motor, that's the one that needs to be disconnected and uh, now I can just withdraw that through the front and then we can pull that out of the way and come right out of the way a couple of cables poking through there I've just got to um, remember that they come through that uh, bottom window in the um, in the um, timing chain cover okay well so now hopefully um, the cover will come off um, so We'll just give this a little tap here. Yep, and it's, uh, you can see hopefully that the cover is moving. It may be that I will need to remove one of these or both of these um, um, uh, crash bar mounts. There's also another grommet in the back of the case, which I need to release. So, pushing that grommet out there, there we go. Now the cover can come forward. Yeah, as I suspected, I'm going to need to remove the crash bar bolt.
go. And there is the timing chain. we need to get is the outrigger bearing um, what we'll do when we put the cover back on is warm it up a little and that will help it go over that bearing uh, more easily so there you have it what we're going to do now is um, well first thing to do is to inspect the, um, the sprockets Uh, and they look good. They're just like um, sprockets you'd find on a motorcycle drive chain on your old Triumph or whatever. Just inspect them for hooked teeth and their condition. The other thing The other thing that uh, you can see here is um, the um, spring link, which is just here, which has got to be undone, and we've got the timing chain tensioner just there. Um, this timing chain's done quite a few miles, uh, so due for replacement. I can't remember the last time I changed it but I think I've only ch ever changed it once in 400,000 miles so I don't know how many it's done. Uh, anyway, so things that have got to come off is this uh, tensioner blade here, uh, this tensioner blade here, the plunger has got to be held back and then the uh, timing chain can be undone. This is the kit I bought. So I got this, bought this kit from um, um, Motor Bins. Uh, there's a timing chain cover gasket, and you can also see in the packaging just here a little green washer. That's another gasket. Those those gaskets are essential for. Um, uh, mounting the timing chain cover correctly uh, there's three gaskets those two little washers and the one I just showed you then there's the timing chain there we've got a couple of new tensioner blades here and here a spring for the um, movable timing chain tensioner and then um, um, an e-clip and an oil seal and an o-ring the oil seal is for the alternator rotor. The O-ring is for the um, is for the bean can. Um, so that's those are all the bits that you need to do the job. Uh, so there we are. So that uh, dot you can see there is the timing mark for the camshaft sprocket, and it's coming round to being aligned up I've knocked it round I put it the I put the uh, engine in top gear or the gearbox in top gear and I've knocked uh, on the back wheel I've knocked the um, the, the pulley around um, so that we've got the timing marks almost aligned and if I just tap it round a bit further So hopefully you can see the timing marks are lined up. There is a dot on the camshaft uh, sprocket 
which is in the bottom part of the picture and there is a peg mark just there in the top part of the picture and I don't know how it looks to you on the screen but they are both exactly in alignment and the um, sprocket comes must come up into alignment from this direction from this side because that's the side it normally rotates okay, that's the way it normally rotates so the sprocket looking at it from the front rotates clockwise the camshaft sprocket rotates clockwise looking from the front and that's the direction you must come at it from it's that way you get all the slack on the right on the correct side of the chain okay because the cam the crankshaft is pulling the cam the camshaft sorry the crankshaft sprocket is pulling the camshaft sprocket so the chain that you can see here on the right hand side of the or uh, well, left hand side as we look at it but the right hand side of the bike as you sit on it that should be that's the tension side and the opposite side is the tensioner side okay so that says so it's the side with all the slack so you must come up up on the uh, timing marks driving the crankshaft uh, in the direction that it normally turns to get it to get the timing exactly right all right so we've got those two sprockets exactly lined up now and what i'm going to do now is um, start dismantling the assembly uh, so we can put the new chain on so i've attached a couple of little zip ties one around the tensioner blade okay and uh, another one through loop through the other zip tie and um, I'm just going to push the, um, the tensioner blade back and hook that on the um, on the stud that's there, that convenient stud, and uh, I'm just going to push that back as far as it will go and um, pull the zip tie tight. So you should be able to see there that um, the zip tie is pulling is pulling the tensioner blade back. So what you should be able to see here is that uh, I've tied the um, tensioner blade back so that uh, the chain is quite free and then what we can do next is undo this guide on this side you can see the chain's pretty loose now and then we can then we can break the chain uh, and dismantle the tensioner blade and take the spring out etc and then tie it all back up again Uh, so there are two, you can't quite see them, but there are two um, fasteners holding this um, guide on. One's a bolt, the other one's a nut. So I'll just loosen them off. And uh, taking them out. There's the bolt and washer. There is the nut. And washer. And there's the guide plate. That piece is going to be replaced. Actually, there was a. I should point that out. There is a washer that goes underneath. That's quite important. You can see on there. There's a washer on there that stays on there, 
that this washer goes on there before the guide plate okay so that washer is where the bolt hole is that should be between the um, uh, um, crankcase and the guide plate so that goes on first then the guide then the bolt goes through with another washer on the head so remember that's very very important two washers that are distance pieces for that guide plate okay right now as is often the way the spring link has ended up down here and I may well have to uh, move the timing marks uh, to get the uh, the chain out but we can still set them up independently of each other um, when putting it back anyway we'll see how we go dropped off. I'll take the uh, plate off of this side of the chain. The spring links dropped into my um, bash plate but we won't need, well, well we will retrieve it but we don't need it obviously because there will be a new one on the on the um, um, new chain and as I suspected the the link won't go back far enough and I don't think there's quite enough room to get that off unfortunately Okay. So what we'll have to do, what we'll have to do, is um, knock the timing marks out of alignment a wee bit, and then bring them back up independently. Okay, so now we can push that back, but there's a hole there, so I'm going to plug that. I'm going to plug that hole because I don't want the, sp the link dropping down inside the engine. So we'll plug that hole up with a bit of rag. makes viewing a little bit more difficult. I definitely don't want that spring link falling inside. So there we are, we plug that hole up and now we can push that out. There we go, separated. So off with the chain. There's the link. There we go, there's the chain off. I can remove the E clip. I'm going to plug that hole up again um, because uh, when I remove the E clip, 
I don't want to run the risk of that dropping down inside the um, inside the engine. So right so here's the e-clip that i'm going to remove we'll just stick a screwdriver in behind that And there's the E clip. And now we can take the tensioner off. The battery's running out. Oops. There's the plunger and the spring. There's the plunger, there's the plunger, there's the spring. Okay, so that's all that done.